Destination Earth, Part 8. An angel spreads its wings. Spin, Gavi, Jenner, and Professor Anderton were on their way to the Baraka asteroid field. Following an old smuggler's tale, they were hoping to find Eve, the second colony ship from fabled planet Earth. What was that? A common feature of an asteroid field is that there are asteroids. Oh, very funny, Miss Smarty Pants. I think I've found it. There's an object in the center of the field that has a similar size and composition to Adam. Buckle up. Flying through an asteroid field can get bumpy. Careful, that rock is hurling straight at us. I see it. It's huge. Hold on tight. I'm going to fly around it. Book. Great galaxy. She is a beauty. Oh. On the far side of the giant asteroid, a stunning vista revealed itself to them. A colony vessel. Adam's counterpart, shaped like a beautiful woman. She was enormous. Her arms reached out in front of her as if she was about to dive off a cliff. She looked straight ahead with a stern expression on her face. They had found Eve. This is it. I have been dreaming of this all my life. The second colony ship. I was right. This is the greatest moment of my career. Garvey, blow it a bit. What? That was the plan. You want to destroy this... This marvel? We can't do that. I don't like doing it either, Professor, but that is what we came here for. Garvey. Professor, let go of my hand. Wait, just a minute. Let's discuss this. There's nothing to discuss. We have to destroy it. This spaceship is the only way to locate Earth, if Earth even exists. You saw what the Greys can do to a planet? Yeah, of course. But I think we should take a moment to reflect on what we're doing. The this is the most important artifact in the history of, of history. This is the key to all of history. So you want to gamble the fate of the human race on your scientific curiosity? No, but... I'm sorry, Professor. It must be destroyed. You said so yourself. If the Greys find Earth, they are going to wipe out the human race. Okay, I understand. I'm not a fool. All I'm asking is that we take a closer look. I, I want to go inside, take a few pictures. Then we can proceed. I don't know. I beg you. Just one look. How are the Greys supposed to find us? They couldn't have followed us through hyperspace, could they? Garvey? No chance. Let us go on board, Spin, please. All right. You have an hour. Oh, thank you, Spin. One hour. And then we blow her up. And let's hope we don't regret it. There is an airlock between her shoulder blades. If I sit down there, we can connect it directly to the blizzard. All right, good idea. Do it. Okay, we've docked. Professor, Jenna, follow me down to the airlock. Remember, you have one hour. inside the ship. Oxygen, hydrogen, the works. Okay, I'm opening our side of the airlock. I'm looking at the outer door of the colony ship. It's intact, but the hull is pockmarked with little craters, probably meteoroid impacts. She's a well-built ship if she survived aeons containing an atmosphere. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> There's a compartment beside the door. I'll open it. Right, there's a big wheel, probably the manual override. <sighs> Jenna, Professor, I'm going to need some help here. <laughs> What's that smell? Mm, stale air. Look, there's a primitive connector here at the entrance. See if we can hook the blizzard up to Eve's computer. Use the wireless transceiver I gave you. I'm plugging it in. I'm going to have to tweak the wiring a little bit. Okay, you're hooked up. I'll see what I can do. This computer is ancient. I'll need a while. And in the meantime, we'll have a look around. Spin, shine your light over here. There's something in the floor. Okay. It's a hatch. Jenna, take the light. I'll try to open it. Right. Oh, 
a gaping black hole. Fascinating. And I suppose you want me to go in first, Professor. Yeah, well, you are more used to this sort of thing. Almost getting myself killed, you mean? Spin, there is a little compartment in the side of the hatch. Ah, rope ladder. That's handy. Yeah, probably for evacuations. In an emergency, they'd be triggered automatically. Right, I'll go down first. Carefully. Can you see anything? Well, it's dark. I feel like I'm climbing around in a black hole. I'll shine my light around. Ah! Spin, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. There's a giant statue down here. Head as big as me. Dude's got a beard. Doesn't look too healthy. I can't see the rest. It's lost in darkness. I've hacked into Eve's computer. I'll extend her solar sails. Something's happening. Her shoulder blades are retracting. Wow. It's beautiful. What happened? Eve sprouted some wings. She's turned into an angel. You've got to see this. Wait. Something's happening down here, too. The lights are going on. Great galaxy! This room is huge! It's full of statues and altars and symbols. There's a really fat guy with a huge grin on his face. Some lady with a few too many arms. Some of them have animal heads. And the guy I'm hanging next to is nailed to a gigantic cross. We're coming down. <sighs> Interesting. Most interesting. What is all this stuff? Well, these seem to be representations of ancient belief systems. Gods, if you will. This hall must be a place of worship of some sort. Fascinating. I don't know. This ship gives me the creeps. Do what you have to, Professor, and then let's get out of here. I need to record this. I'm standing inside the colony ship designated Eve. Spin, I've been digging around in Eve's systems. Looks like the lady is armed. She has a flight deck full of fighters and an entire array of cannons. Thanks, Garvey. That's good to know. Might come in handy. Let's see what's behind this door. Dad. Dad, you've got to come see this. Amazing. We have passed through a door into the adjacent room. We are standing on a platform overlooking a long central hub. The walls are slightly curved and rise up from an area in the middle which is an estimated 10 kilometers long. Thousands of little windows are set into the walls. Elevators go up to these windows. It, it looks like a skyscraper turned outside in. Let me zoom in on one of the windows. Each of the windows is a pod bay. They housed the pods that were used to colonize the galaxy. Let, let's take a closer look. There's an elevator next to the platform. A step in. Uh, we are standing next to the nearest window at the bottom level. The pod behind it has been jettisoned. The bay is empty. I can see the stars. Dad, the pod behind this one is still there. Oh, look at this. This pod is exactly like the one I found on Eno. Whenever the ship reached a habitable planet, a number of these pods were jettisoned to form the first colonies. Hmm. What does this switch do? Ah! A dead body. It's all wrinkly and dried up. Don't oh, just get it off me! Oh, I wish you hadn't shattered its spin. Must you destroy everything? I could have learned a lot from studying that corpse. I'll give you a corpse to study in a minute. Let's take a look inside. We're stepping into the colony pod. Look at this. A row of hibernation chambers. One of them is open. The others are closed, containing similar corpses to the one Spin destroyed. Look at the logo on the uniforms. This is the final proof each colonist has planet Earth stitched onto his breast pocket. Oh, poor devils. Okay, do your recordings and then we leave. I'm not sure I can take any more surprises. Wait, we have to find the map room. If we can locate the black box and destroy it, this ship will be useless to the greys. Spin, come up to the blizzard. You need to see this. I'll be right there. You two, don't go wandering off. 
there is a row of lockers behind the hibernation chambers. I'll open one of them. A plastic tube with a cap on it. I'll open it. Peppermint. Astounding. Jenna, take a look at this. Jenna? Jenna? Jenna had wandered off in search of Eve's map room. At the far end of the central hub, she had stumbled across a set of rails that seemed to lead into a solid wall. Unwittingly, she stepped onto a contact plate on the floor. A hidden door in the wall opened and a ground car appeared on the rails. Jenna sat down inside the car, which sped off down the tracks, whisking her deeper into the ship. Meanwhile, Spin had reached the Blizzard's cockpit. What did you want me to see? Look at the display. There it is again. A shape just outside the asteroid field. It flickers in and out of existence. It's these damned asteroids. I can't get a clear signal. Can you boost the power? I've already diverted all auxiliary power to the sensors. What if you tap into Eve? Her solar panels should generate enough power to amp up the signal. Worth a try. Done. Damn! A grey scout ship! They found us! How is that possible? There's no way they could have monitored our hyperspace jump. They must have followed us ever since Aiden. That's how they kidnapped the Professor in the first place. Maybe they have some sort of long-range scanner? What, the Scansu hyperspace? Impossible! They must have hit us with a tracker. You know I scan the hull before every jump. They couldn't have attached so much as a hair to the outside of the ship. Yes, to the outside. What's wrong? Spin. Hey! What are you doing with Wink? Are you crazy? Wink is a robot. A great tracker. That's how they found us. And that's why they let us escape from the Taycran North. They wanted us to lead them here. Professor Anderton, get back to the ship. We have to get out of here. Too late. Grey fighters closing in. Anderton, hurry up. Yeah, I'm here. Where's Jenna? Isn't she with you? No. Where is she? She must still be in the ship. We can't stay here. The Greys are attacking. I have to disengage from Eve. I'm going back in to find Jenna. Fight off the Greys, then come back to get us. I'll do my best. If I haven't hailed you in ten minutes, blast the ship. With you still on it? No way. The fate of humanity depends on it. If the Greys get Eve, we won't last long anyway. I'll be back to get you. I've closed the airlock. You're good to take off. Would Spin, Garvey, Jenner and Professor Anderton find a way to escape the Grey Trap? Tune in next time for part nine of Destination Earth. Destination Earth is written and directed by Patrick McGinley. It stars Jerry Redford, Jet Tattersall, Jemima Knight and Peter McCallum and is narrated by Francis Edwards. Music by Silke Matspol. It was recorded at Sydney Sound Brewery by recording engineer John Resk. If you enjoy Destination Earth, please tell your friends about it and like and subscribe in your podcast app of choice. Reviews and comments are very much appreciated. On Twitter, we are at Desti Earth Audio. We are Destination underscore Earth underscore Audio on Instagram, and you can find us on the web at DestinationEarthAudio.com. Thanks for listening.